Functions in Excel are pre-built formulas that you can use to analyze your data. Excel 2007 now has a function wizard to help you with the creation of your functions. When you start a function, this will automatically appear if you select the function from one of the function groups or subcategories that we have here. So let's say that we want to create a formula that will analyze whether a salary is above or below $50,000. This would be a logical function and it's the if function. So let me go ahead and start this off by coming up here to my logical command, select that by clicking the arrow to the right of the logical command and then choosing if. When I select if we have the function arguments dialog box that appears or displays on your screen. This is the function wizard that will guide us through the development of this function by requesting the various arguments that we need to fulfill to create this function. So the logical test is the first thing that we need to create. If a certain value is above 50,000 is what we're looking for. So I'll go ahead and click this button which is a collapse or uncollapse button and when I do it will collapse the function arguments dialog box allowing me access to my data within my worksheet. Well I want to compare if the salary here in column C is greater than 50,000. So I'll go ahead and select C2 by clicking it and then type in the greater than sign and then 50,000 I'll uncollapse this dialog box by clicking the uncollapse toggle button which will bring back the entire dialog box and now I can move on to my value if true argument. Well this is what do you want to appear if the value is true? Well I want the word above to appear and by putting above in quotation marks Excel knows that this is a text label to be inputted into the cell that we've chosen for our function. Now, what do I want my value to be if it's false? Well, I want it to say below. And again, I'll enclose that in quotation marks, which indicates that this is a text value. Also note that in this function arguments dialog box, it's actually giving you the result based on your location of the active cell when you create this function. So it's saying that in C2, the value is greater than 50,000 and it will put above in the active cell. So I'll go ahead and say OK to this and notice that above is now present here in D2. To fill this formula to the bottom here, simply grab the handle in the lower right hand corner and drag it down and notice that Excel will calculate all of the values of salaries that are above by putting above and those that are below 50,000 by putting below. And that is a little demonstration on how to use the function wizard for creating your functions. Now let's go ahead and apply that to our sales monthly worksheet. So go ahead and make your sales monthly worksheet active or open it. And if you would like to start with a worksheet that reflects the work we've done up to this point in the class, open up 0809 start file. And notice that this is our sales monthly and here at the bottom we were working. Now what we're going to do here is create a function that will calculate what row this minimum and maximum value is. And the function we need to use is the match function. So select cell C40 and then come up here to look up and reference command. Select the arrow next to it and the one that we want is match. So let's go ahead and choose match and this will open up our function arguments. Now it's asking us for what is the lookup value. Well let's go ahead and collapse this function arguments dialog box by clicking the collapse and uncollapse toggle button and come down here and select B40 which is our criteria. We'll go ahead and uncollapse that. So that's our lookup value or our criteria that we're looking up. Now we need to distinguish what the lookup array is where this value was found. Let's go ahead and click in the lookup array field and again collapse this dialog box by clicking the collapse and uncollapse button and then select F36 and set your range 
to go all the way up here to F8. Then go ahead and click on the uncollapse button and now we want to set up what the match type is. Now notice that down here it's telling us that the match type is a number. It's either 1, 0, or negative 1 indicating which value to return. Well if you type in a 1 Excel is expecting a number that is equal to or less than what your lookup value is which would be our minimum number. If you put a zero in the match type field, this would say it needs to be an exact match. If you put a negative one in the match type field, this would indicate that you are looking for a value that is greater than or equal to the minimum lookup value. Well, we want an, an exact match, so that is the number zero. We'll go ahead and put zero in this field. Now, if you needed to find out what each of these numbers were, you can always click on Help on this function to open up the Help file and get a detailed description of what is required in the match function. But we know we want zero, and notice that it down here it's indicating that our value would be six. Well, let's see what this six means. So we'll go ahead and say OK and notice that the very first field that has two dollars or the minimum number is right here for raisins and nuts and it's two dollars and it is one, two, three, four, five, six rows down. So it's indicating that in row six we have our first match value. Now what we will do in the following movie is nest the match function inside of the index function so that we actually return what product that is from our product list. But for right now let's go ahead and copy this function so that it will also work on our maximum cell. Let's go ahead and grab the fill handle so that you have the small plus sign and drag that down so that it fills into C41. And notice this is indicating that 15 rows down we are going to find the maximum value.